Alumay Minglava. Minglava to all of you. It is the People's Goals regular conversation. I wish everyone to be healthy and safe. I will serve as the moderator for you. My name is Yetat. For People's Goal, we have walked around the defection issues. As you all know that, it has been over two years in this revolution. And I will also um, present the today topic, which is the defector spirit, attitude, and ideas. For the defectors, there are many ideas and opinion around the defection. Since we have this revolution for midterm and for a long term situation, this defector topic is a very important topic for us to be mindful about and to talk about. And defector is defection is the area that need support and that need checked and balanced and that need questions uh, that needs answers to be questions so for today we have panelists who relate the defection in various aspect and we have speaker supporting defector and we have speaker who is the family member of the defector and we have a defector as the panelist today so we have various speakers from various background but they all are related to the defectors. First of all, I would like to introduce you with the panelists. We have Go Tan Mian Ao. Go Tan Mian Ao is supporting the defectors. He is currently working for mothers. Mother's um, um, Embrace program as well. In Burmese, Mei Mei Yingguen. Please introduce yourself. I was the ex political prisoner. I set up this Mei Mei Yingguen organization. For our organization, we support defectors, CDMRs currently. And in this revolution, we have activists, we have human rights offenders, we have defectors, and we have various activists running away from the illegal and unfair arrest of the military, and we help them as well as our organization. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your introduction. And I would now like to ask to introduce yourself, Matthew Zaluin, you are the wife of the CDMRs, a captain. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. I am a wife of the CDMRs, de facto a captain. Thank you. And we have Go Nyi Tuta, who is having internet connectivity difficulty joining us. So when he is with us, we will make sure he is introduced himself. Now let's continue with the conversation itself. We are going to have a two rounds of conversation. The first round would be looking back in terms of the defectors experienced in this revolution and the second round of conversation would be the future thinking what we should consider what we should think of for the future in the aspect of defection and we will also have 
at the very end of this program the Q&A section for our audience. So for audience, if you would like to raise or comment your points and your question, please make use of the chat box or Q&A um, box available in this webinar. First, I would like to invite Go Damien out. You are supporting CDMRs. You are supporting the defectors in terms of in terms of moving them around, in terms of making sure they are at the safe places. So looking back two years, what would be the role of the defectors in this revolution? And we have defectors, soldiers, and police, policemen. And defectors are seen very diversely by the public, public, some of the public welcomed the defectors, but some of the public has concern and suspicion that the defectors can be the spies of the military council. So, what we, what would be your opinion, and what, how, and what and how we should look at the defection? Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. In terms of the two years experience of the defection or in this revolution, now let me talk about the spring revolution. In this spring revolu revolution, we have four pillars. The, the public participation, ERO armed struggle, defectors position and role, and international positions and pressures. So all of these are the four pillars of the the uh, revolution. I will also talk each pillars in terms of our better understanding. As we all know that public participations and engagement and support and assistance in this revolution is still very, very strong. And the ERO arms struggle is, as I mentioned, one of the pillars of the success of this spring revolution. And as you all know that we have we have the same mindset of winning in this revolution but we are we normally would not harm our own family our own brothers and sisters but in this war situation there are costs there are arms there are uh, expenses to rage wars um, the as you all know that the weapons, um, bullets, guns are very expensive. And on top of that, the most important thing is the lives of the human. So for our success, we are investing and sacrificing a lot. Now, talking about the defector, we have many CDMRs as the terminology, everyone is very much familiar these days. So in the CDMRs, they usually have two common characteristics, I would say. They are experienced in the past and the weapon and information. So some of them bring weapons or information together with them when they um, when they become defectors and with some of the defectors are coming out of the military with a very uh, valuable military intelligence and some of the defectors are with the photos or media evidences for the victims at the interrogation camps. All of these information and, and data are very, very important for the future accountability and responsibility mechanisms and processes. So these are the situation with the defectors, I would say. And for the international aspect, the defector information is made available for the international community by NUG um, as much as they can as well. And what I was 
I mean, what I'm trying to talk about is that uh, we have public support in this revolution. We have armed struggle in this revolution as well. Again, armed struggle, it's, of course, the least resort that everyone want to make use of it. But this is inevitable in this spring revolution in, in, in to have the to have the um, armed struggle. Because the thing is that we really have to play tactically in our armed struggle so that we would save war expenses and we will optimize the re better result of the revolution. In terms of the armed struggle, armed struggle is not necessarily about killing a lot of human, but it's just said the it is the best when the least blood is shed, but the success is with us. So the factor play a very important role in that kind of thinking. The factors are seen with suspicion by public. And according to our experience, I mean, the factors play a very important role and we should welcome them as well. And in this revolution, I mean, having suspicion, not trusting, it's there, I know, but too much of it would be the negative factor for the sex of our revolution. But the thing is that for me, I invest my trust on the defectors. You need to trust them first so that they will trust you. According to my experience, I have an experience that the defector become the spy for the military um, council. I mean, some of my friends warned me that not to trust them too much on the defectors. Uh, but my opinion is that to be defector, it is the risk you sacrifice or your, you bet your life to be the defector, even if you send the defector back to the military, the defector will never go back because once you ran away from the military, then you are already under the death penalty. Unlike the CDMRs from the other civil service aspect. So that is one point. And another point is that the defectors are with quite a lot of valuable military intelligence. I mean, if um, you ask me, should I welcome defector? Should, I mean, my shortest answer is yes, we even have to welcome them more. Because the thing is that the more defectors we have, the less blood it will be shed in this armed struggle. And then the better chance of a success of this revolution. And this is the most scary thing for Min Online to have with him. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Duza Luen for the discussion. You are the family member of the CDMR military personnel. In past two years, we have a lot of defectors. I just would like to ask you the situations of the family members of the defectors in past two years. And what is your current situation? What is the defectors family member current situation these days? And what is your experience overall? If you would comment on them, thank you. In terms of the family members of the defectors, the family members play a very important role in supporting the defector. The defector families are the wives, the children and other family relatives. But the thing is that people really do not understand the life of the military men and the family members because there 
was least communication or understanding or knowledge about them by the public. So it is very important that the factor and the defector family member explain about themselves to the public so that the public would feel very much um, understandable for them and and it is very important that the defectors um, communicate to the public about their situation that they experience negatively in the military and it is important for the defector to talk about the difficult experience in becoming defectors and being the defectors so that the public will understand the defection more and it will be higher chances that the non-defectors will become defectors in huge quantity. Now, what I would like to talk about is that the family member would like to be proud of the defector that they have in their family as well. So the role of the spouses of the defectors play a very important role to give moral support or any kind of support. My husband um, become became defector. He wanted to participate in CDM movement already. I did not even have to persuade him that much. And what I told to him that is that, well, you know, don't worry about me much. Do whatever you have to do. I think with this alone, he was very much supported. And he said that he would join public revolution. He would join the with the positions of a public and he would serve the public with all the trainings and everything after he joined the CDM movement. And we liked his idea very much and we supported his idea as well. So now my husband, it's at one of the front lines in the country and and supporting and serving the um, defend forces. So what I'm trying to say is that the support and assistance of the family member to the defector family, it's extremely important. And another thing I would like to talk about is the future generation and the future generation require to have a safe environment and thriving environment for the for 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 their for their future as well so since we are now having the historic and unprecedented solidarity among all the all the people among all the ethnic cities it is the time that we have now to make use of it for the better future and to leave the military master and slave dynamic. This is the chance for you to leave a slave-like position of you under this military um, dictatorship. Our future generation needs education. Our future generation needs proper medical care I am mainly talking about the military family members. What it is going now, what it is happening now, is that the family members of the military men these days are very difficult in seeking proper education, proper healthcare, and proper living standard. So I would like to ask the 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 family members of the military men to contact your um, your family a member serving or working as the soldiers explain them about that and then encourage them to join to the defection thank you very much thank you very much for your contribution now I would like to invite Go Nyi Tuta. 
Cognituta is one of the defectors joining the defection at the very earliest, um, at the earliest um, time of the defection movement. Now, I would like to ask you what would be your view in terms of defection over past two years and and another thing that I would like to ask you is about the defection campaign, the attitude, the spirit, the idea of the defectors on the defection campaign. What do they think about it? Do we need to change anything? Can you please contribute your discussion around that? Thank you very much. Well, when I started in this defection um, campaign, public was very emotional. People was very high in their spirit or in terms of their sentiment in this defection campaign. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that public and the decision maker at that time felt a need to have the defection, they agreed the principle of it, but the actual implementations of the defection campaign was rather laid. So it was only at the 2022 or late 2021 that the defection campaign is getting, getting um, its momentum. And at this moment, we have a, a, a evolved pattern of the defection, I would say. I would say that we did not meet the expectation that we originally had. It is the trust issue. It is the understanding issue that we have had. Some of us, I mean, some of the revolutionary um, forces um, see the defection with a very um, clear uh, vision and very clear idea, but some of the revolutionary organization do not necessarily believe the defection aspect. And another thing that I would like to talk about is that the defectors themselves found their situation a very different way than they expected. And there has been over 30,000 defectors, according to my statistics, and majority of them, I mean, not even if not majority, but the more of the 30,000 defectors were from police forces. So what I'm trying to say is that some of them joined the PDF movement and some of the defectors tried to be useful themselves, but not all the defectors are effectively and efficiently participating in the revolution. I would say that there it's no much defection anymore. I think the defection, the defection, I uh, mean, um, era, it's 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 is finished. I would say. Whenever we ask the experience of the defectors, and eighty to ninety percent of the defectors mentioned that they did not know that they are expected to be useful in this revolution. So very few of the defector can contribute in this revolution, and only very few of them are mentally and physically fit to be useful in the revolution, but the majority of them are just like easy going in this revolution after they are becoming the defectors. I think this is the lesson that we have to learn in this revolution, but nevertheless, the momentum and the figures and the quantities of the defectors are the 
highest achievement that we have in our experience and and the I mean, talking about the civil disobedient movement, the civil disobedient movement of the non-military civil service, it's getting getting lower, and then the armed forces um, civil disobedient movement is not that strong anymore. Now, I'm not blaming to anyone. We are to take the responsibility of all the consequences of it. We might not be that much tactical in our movement, but then again, we tried whatever we can, but we haven't achieved the expectation that we had, which we put it very high at the very beginning. Whenever we talked about defection, defection is not only about the military men i mean the defectors is all about the military men their wives their children their family members so i always talk talk about that and we also have to think of the defection for the the quasi military men as well in our statistics there are there are 70,000 or uh, between 70,000 and 100,000 quasi-military men in this country. So I always pointed it out as well. They have to be targeted for the, the fact that they are to be seen as armed forces as well. So we have this seven. Uh, 750,000 armed um, uh, uh, people, armed uh, personnel in this country, and how are we going to make sure that they become the defectors? But why it is still very hard for them to become the defectors? There are many reasons. It takes time, and there are time limitations as well, and people participation is not limit, limitless, uh, but we have the ERO, the ERO are uh, involving in this defection a lot, uh, NUG does the defection um, um, uh, activity, uh, but not necessarily in all the details. They have policies for the defection, but the practical aspect of the defection by the NUG for the defection is not much. ERO are the ones doing the defection practically as well. And they looked into their areas about it. They help the defectors in their areas as well. We, for us, have to lobby and, and advocate the defection to NUG a lot and a lot. And I do not satisfy very much with the handling of the defection by the NUG. But the thing is that, let us look at the um, calculation. Calculation is not only should be on the soldiers. I mean, talk, uh, talking about only to the soldiers and talking about the um, military only is not right in this defect, uh, defection. And defection is to be, defection is to be targeted for every armed personnel in the country. There are many types of armed personnel in the country. So, of course, this is going to be very difficult, but your sentiment, your emotion, and your your feeling should not be very judgmental. I mean, in the future, we are going to have much more armed uh, personnel in the country because uh, it seems that the village administrator or the quarter administrator will be armed. It seems so. Um, so... It is very important for us to change ourselves in seeing 
the aspect of the defector or in helping the um, defector. Now, when I talked about defection and the defector, the armed personnel, their wives, their children, their family relatives are all important to be in this defection perspective. Because the thing is that an arm of a of of a armed personnel can be in the hands of the wife, in the hands of the children, in the hands of the family members. So now we have to really evaluate ourselves in this defection campaign. Do we have a proper calculation? Do we calculate it very well in terms of targeting the defection? Or do we um, take care of our emotions so much um, in this defection? then we should think of our judgmental way as well. Now, I also would like to talk about that it is the personal choice as well. So whenever the whenever you come into the defection, would, would you make your defection based on your emotion or your principle. If you make your defection on your principle, then it would not be that great as well. So this is something that we should think. Thank you. Thank you for making the point. And I, I still recall what you have said. I think it was around May that the defense mechanism, those who support the military and that uh, those who are, they are, it is important to undermine their will to support or defend the military. If we, we need to make it systematic, then that we, what will be the, you know, what is the defection strategy looks like? So this is something I would like to discuss in the next round. Thank you for their contribution. Now I would like to go back to Gudami Aung that uh, and other speakers already have discussed that the defectors have a lot of challenges and issues it is also important to it is also important to prepare psychologically as well and that uh, there could also be different needs as well so that as a somebody, as, as a person who is working closely with the defector what will be your you know the recommendation for the defectors to be able to remain strong and remain committed to the revolution and that and also you know that ideological uh, that building building the ideology, what do you think, what should be done? Well, the fact, my message to the defectors is that uh, it is important for the defectors to be proud of who they are. There are a lot of challenges and that uh, and that we ourselves, we know that we know the challenges and difficulties of the defectors because, you know, we live here, we support the defectors and they, they face so many challenges in different ways. And we are seeing the challenges they have the defectors and that uh, and even then we cannot assist all the defectors, uh, you know, yet uh, that right now that uh, we also have uh, the organization, the organization that support the CDM, they have disappeared now, they are gone. They, are, they have gone into, they have faded into nothing. So what we are facing now is that uh, it's like uh, we call it the, uh, so whenever you, you are to write about, uh, you know, oh, I want to buy some, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that uh, if I want to, if I want to, if we were to, you know, po post like that, post like that, uh, okay, we need, uh, we need to make up or we need uh, many for the, we need bullets or that we need for the, 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 for, for the CDMRs. It's very difficult to raise funds and that, uh, and then that's why we don't do any fundraising anymore. We try to raise funds on our own. We go through as much as we can because nobody want to nobody wants to contribute to the defectors. I think it is also important for the products to be recognized that some and be proud of who they are because of facing these challenges. It is hard, but we know that they are going through difficulty, but they have the appreciation of the people. It's incredible. I myself is a political prisoner. In the past, you know, that uh, they were would they tell us that we are trying to, you know, we are trying to throw pebbles at the Mount Everest. That's what they say that uh, we are for for us are standing, you know, against the monetary regime. But now that people are people understand us, uh, when we are released, when we are released from the prison, you know, that when the political situations are change, uh, you know, that people come to us, people welcome us, people recognize us, and there were a lot of, uh, you know, that as a former political prisoners, uh, we you know people are inviting and do different, uh, you know, meetings and sessions, and that, that all these uh, all these in the in the spirit revolution as well that uh and i've been on the run for the over uh, you know two years 
it, I have never had to go through that. A lot of difficulty, difficulty because people appreciate us, people support us. This is what I'm saying as a political pres former political prisoner. In the future, the CDM said that we that we call them that we call ourselves the CDM, and of course, uh, people do not understand about the differences. For well, as a CDM, you know, the CDM will also be in the future that uh, CDM will also be considered as a rec recognized as someone to be proud of. That that they will also make history as well. That uh, and that uh, we face challenges, and it's not easy. We know that we already have uh, faced similar challenges in the past. Uh, you know that uh, because we are former political prisoners, we cannot get a job. You know that the family it is difficult to support our family. We face such challenges too. But the challenges that we face, and that uh, you know, no, we 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 didn't have uh, and even people are not afraid to even to talk to us when we see each other in the street. And yet, uh, then we become uh, you know political prisoners or something to be recognized and appreciated that's the change that we have seen so for the cdms i think uh, that uh, even if uh, that uh, the number of cdm the, the, the number of cdms are you know uh, much less than before i think uh, there is uh, appreciation for us well, that uh, people admire the cdms people support the cdms even even the non-cdms and that you know they sometimes they they are not even able to speak out against them but people d dislike them you know non-cdms are they the non-CDM are facing a very strong uh, that uh, you know that reaction from the people. I think it is important for the defector be proud of who they are as well because uh, the fact is uh, that uh, you have participated with dignity in this revolution and that's how you are. You are that it is important to be uh, to to feel the dignity for the for, for you done that only then. Uh, only when you feel the dignity and the honor of your action, then you will feel, you will feel also uh, that 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 is some peace for your mind as well. Thank you for the thank you for the your contribution. It is important for the defector to be proud of who you are, and it's also important to understand that uh, the principle and that uh, decision of your action, and to be able to find peace with it. And thank you for sharing that. Now, I would like to invite Matthew Zwane and our next speaker. That uh, shall be she that she has a emergency situation, so in her area, so she has to leave the, the our talk show. Sorry, so that we will continue the discussion with other speakers and that. That, uh, I think uh, that uh, I think it is also that uh, that some of the speakers, um, you know, taking a lot of challenges and difficulties to be to come and talk to us. So we appreciate you coming here to support as well. So I would like to go next round to Konyuta. Konyuta, you have shared earlier about the defectors uh, that. Uh, that um, you know that about 95 percent of the defectors have then 95 percent of the defectors have already joined so you're saying that uh, there won't be more defectors coming so what will in the, in the, so in the way forward what should we do about the defector a defection strategy so let's think about that and in uh, in earlier discussion yes there are defectors who came here who are uh, already came here but there is also in terms of organizing more defectors or uh, in terms of uh, uh, mobilizing more defectors there are challenges as well so what kind of mobilization what kind of convincing what kind of uh, you know my building and that uh, ideological um, changes to, should be uh, should we be working on to convince more uh, soldiers to defect more so just a police to defect. When we look at the people that we are facing, we often tend to think is, think of them in different groups and category. Sometimes that uh, organizers do not trust them, and that uh, you don't even need to organize them. You don't need to mobilize them. They just came in. For me personally, that uh, my value is that uh, you know because I because uh, because I try the defection, I become a, I stand by the people. That doesn't uh, you know increase my values for my life. Uh, I try to be a person of value. That when do I make the decision? When do I make this decision or when do I make this decision is part of my value as well. And that uh, this is how I am at that uh, in the next time. Also, this is what I will do because I believe in myself and that I believe in building myself. And this is these are the people. A lot of the early defectors are like that because we are building our life. We we live by the values as well. And that, but however, there's, there is also the, in, the, in that uh, in this institution that uh, however, it is there will be little like this because there is a internal belief system as well and that uh, military law as well as uh, the way they are being uh, treated as a but that the soldiers are being treated as a political prisoner these are the issues so 
that uh, you know that when the people have very little very little or you know that courage courage or that um, you know that um, own ideas or ideology these people are very difficult it's not that they don't want to they they will say that if the situation permits yes i would defect and that that's how they are that's how they think as well right now that uh, the way that that they it, they that the, those who want to uh, defect uh, voluntarily of their own free will that's 95 percent that's already finished so that what remains then if the PDF won the war or that there will be a lot of people who was you know who was who will jump fences who will jump fences on the game and we have to be prepared for it then if we don't accept them because oh now that you're joining us because you are losing the war then that is also not good for us as well. And that uh, then they can, we can also, uh, you know, say that, okay, for security reasons, we are not allowed to be part of this, but we can also leave them out as well. But when we say defectors, uh, I think it, it is just not the soldiers and the soldier and the police, but it is also important that those are the potential weapon bearers should be taken into consideration and that uh, it could be wives of the soldiers or it could also be you know they are they are you know that they are, they are, it could be that that the adult children it could be village administrator it could be firefighters it could also be that facility or their the militia group it could be anyone but one thing for certain is that uh, you know the more the weapon bearers are there in Myanmar people are armed uh, the civilians are armed that it will also be harder harder for further for us to face that as well well, because it is important that we, that we have to tell them that we are also working for their future too and that um that uh, you know what we want is that uh, we are uh, we are working we are the work that we do is uh, for the for the uh, for the for all the citizens for the population of Myanmar that uh, except for those who are like very um that who are really horrible that some people also even don't even understand what they want as well that uh, you know it is important that uh, you know the people are whatever people are doing they are being driven by their belief system so i think it is important uh, to take the time Time to uh, change that uh, belief system as well, but for that to happen, uh, for for us to do that, uh, that uh, it is important for us to do it systematically. Just do it uh, with the, so it is important to for us to uh, understand their belief system as that and that as well. That uh, you know either for the among the soldiers or that uh, uh, that soldiers or the police. I think it is um, you know when you have the people, if their brethren are bringing them in, this is what you can do. Uh, right now, for the moment, it's too late. We only we need to we need to we need to win the war so that they will collapse and they will defend they will default and if we if we met that if we encounter them it is important to encourage them that those people who you you know who who defect whether they are 100 or whether they are you know they are, they are 10 or 50 if they can if they are active in convincing other people so that people who the people of the government are told the host are what they think and this is that that means that you have a they have vision that they means that they they are thinking long term as well so we can see how many of have been working on the set of factor issue that's the answer that's the answer in a way that it is also that also is you know on our our that's our that's our skill we cannot do that and that's the issue that we have there has been a, we have a, we have we have what we try to you know uh we try to mobilize them as much as we can to participate as participate as well but they are psychological as well as on the physical issues we're not able to address the issue they face so we had to be able to get them to work for us or work on the issue so what happened is that uh in terms of effectiveness, it's not effective. It's not faster that it should have been. So now that, uh, so who, how many, which percentage remain? If you were to, you know, study this as well, you know, defectors can, although those, how many of the defectors are saying, you know, others who you should defect, you know, it will be only about 10% of them, 10%. That's, that's what, well, that's all that, uh, you know, it is, it is, it's, that's, that's also, that's a very clear indicator what is missing and what is needed. If we can do that, we'll also study because this can also be uh, something uh, that do, it, do, do, very difficult to do that as well. But this is something we could also learn for the future. What we can do, uh, that is that uh, I think you know, that the potential, uh, those who can bear the weapons in the future, I think we need to think about not just the soldiers, not just the armed forces. We also need to think about, uh, think about those who can also pick up weapons and bear them as well. I think it is important to, we 
know, important to give them messages to make sure that they were, they, even if they are not on our side, that they will not be able to uh, support the military. So that's what we need to do. So either that, um, that uh, so for their, for their family members or that their former veterans and all these, I think it is important to make sure that they will not, if they are working for the, if they are working for the you know, military, that if they are working like at 10%, then make sure that they only work 10 and 9% as well so it's easier said than done because it is because you do need a lot of awareness as well you know once we told that for the the the, the, the that, that they say that the, you no know, somebody said that uh, you know uh, that uh, you they accept the fashion in principle but without awareness it will work why aren't why isn't it the, the fashion successful because there is no awareness that uh, and that, that that means that about the host do they don't they have uh, awareness no only a few very few has very few have said that without the awareness without understanding you will not be successful and that's the key that uh, it is important to not to only to accept them as a principle but also understand the value that these people these people represent a force and that's a credible force credible force that can endanger our revolution at risk and that we want to you know that reduce this force uh, to the method possible and that even if they are not uh, by our side that uh, we can also you know the, the uh, their country their contribution to the our enemy so that if we can you know that uh and I mind the work that they do for our enemy this better and when i'm seeing who are doing the most that they can i will say is that it's the ethnic uh revolution organizations are doing the best and doing the most when it comes to this as well because revolution is a process it's a process that goes and that develop and uh, as well the developments here we are seeing is good but we'll see that uh, you know there are a lot of weakness still there are local weakness and that uh, and there should be more people with a vision about this and that's something i'm thinking as as well that uh, it will be better as well and that uh, right now that uh, the, um, we are not uh, i'm not happy with the current situation in the future that we hope that uh, if we were to continue i would just like to say just one more thing if we want to do that in the future then uh, you know that uh, we need to think not only about the security forces we need to count people who can also pick up the weapons and fight for the military as well you know right now they say oh there are only about uh, 60,000 in the front line yes that's true but uh, when you calculate the enemy the force of the enemy that's not only that uh, because they have reserve forces they have people which they turn them into the end forces it's important to be realistic when we calculate that as well it's not those are currently that's current security forces as well and that uh, you know there are also uh they also that uh, you know need to think about those who can also bear weapons and fight for your enemies we need to think about that as well and that uh you know it is important uh, to to make sure that we and uh, that that that, that uh, we, it is important to work systematically uh to target them as well to to put them in strategy if we don't do that if we don't know what will happen if we don't do this get that it will take longer than longer than it should it will take and that uh, that the the sacrifice we have made will be much larger thank you Thank you for very comprehensive uh, discussion, Koji Tuta. So to the main point that you have made is that uh, that that it, those who that there, there will be very few who will uh, you know defect based on their based on their ideology or their, their belief, but uh, there could be other forms of uh, other forms of uh, other forms as well, other forms of defection, and that uh, that we need to take lesson, we need to learn the lesson from the past, and then you know that we must do this and we need to prepare this, and that's what I understood as well, and that uh, when we say uh, that uh, that is as well that it is not about uh, it is important to think not only the soldiers or the police but also it is also important to think about uh, you know a stand that uh, you know those who can bear weapons and fight for the military it is important either to to convince them to join our side or that uh, their contribution as well they need to be we need to think long term we need to be uh, to also to have a vision and to be look at that what is the potential what is happening this is i have taken note of it and thank you for the thank Thank you for their contribution they are also very important and thank you that uh, i will also of course we'll also definitely uh discuss this point to the q a so let's now we are going to the q a so that if you uh, if we have any participant who wants to participate in the discussion please raise your hand uh, that uh, okay so i'm looking at the hands raised uh, we also have a uh, so itary university also, Mandela has raised, raised, 
basis of her hand. So please uh, uh, give your comment and keep your comment and that uh, question uh, to shortly. So it's, it is a question. So that uh, I would like to ask uh, to uh, quite question to that that uh, that as well that uh, you said that um, that the ways you have in Sakai in the Mandalay area and Mandalay and Bakui in the in the in the central land area we are also seeing uh, we are seeing fighting that uh, so the so drone technology is uh, is uh, greatly needed uh, so that uh, no they they cannot uh, so they cannot overcome uh, so overcome that as well so that we are we are it's hard to uh, do that uh, as well that um, that's a uh, can uh, can you uh, can you also share that uh, share knowledge about that we cannot overcome that drone technology? So my question is, can can you do that? And that that uh, people that uh, that that the factors can they share that as well? And that now what I will my next question is about those who remain in the military. Those remain, like it could be uh, from the rank and file to the officers. Why are they not interested in that? You know the fact being uh, becoming the factors. My these are my two questions. Uh, thank you. Could you do that, please? Thank you for the question. The first question is about the drone technology that you want to have. Uh, that uh, especially uh, that uh, uh, the, in the uh, that uh, you know for the, the it is uh, also quite limited in terms of uh, technology and that uh, the work that you can do. Some organizations, like uh, they they have jam, the jam, they, there are jammers the military use. There are ways that that they, you can also set some already organization already have technology to 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 you know go uh, to go beyond the jammer. So I think I will also encourage to them to work with them or to also to share the technology. This is something we can also do as well, and that uh, you know of course. Uh, that uh, the the on the current uh, there, there are also because when you are on the on the ground it's also very difficult to do that as well so that uh, sometimes it can also be very 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 difficult to implement as well technology is not difficult but when you are that the situation you are in to get the to get the raw material can be difficult uh, as well but uh, please reach out to us reach out to us uh, you can reach out to reach you can reach out to me through my personal account I don't know who you are but uh, if I have uh, information that uh, enough information then uh, then we can also so once we have, we know who they are, I can also have you reach out to the other organization to help you as well. That yes, in some areas that uh, that, that they uh, they already have, uh, they were able to overcome the the jammer technology. that some some area already had. That's why drone uh, that don't drone uh, that the battles are uh, that are nearly hundred percent successful. That's the point I would like to make. To the second question, you said that why the soldiers, the remaining soldiers, the rank and file are not interested in becoming that the factor is that uh, that um, you know that uh, it is also there I w we need to look back on the long history of Myanmar uh, that because uh, refactor the factors uh, those uh, those who will become the defectors are uh, uh, that uh, often they do, they don't have much of education and their brain has already been uh, manipulated. They have been uh, brainwashed as well, and that uh, and they have no way of uh, thinking on their own, no way of uh, you know being independent thinking. They don't have the psychological power or that uh, so they don't also have the knowledge as well. So for them that uh, they are not interested in being a defector. That's why, uh, because here there are also two things as well about that. Of course, uh, that uh, generals, general has a lot of uh, assets. They were not, because they were not, you know, give up everything to start from zero. So that, uh, so it, they, for them is that they are, they, they look at like how, how, what kind of guarantee there are that, but what about the food soldiers? They are poor, they don't have any money, they don't have any assets, they are always starving. Why can they defect is that uh, they don't have the education level to do that as well to be very frank here yeah, for me to join the defection and i when i ask myself the question do i want to become a defector that uh, you know that will i be able to face it i will, we will need time for that to face it as well and that um, you know that um, you know we have to we know that there will be a time that i have to you know that the challenge has to go through i know what i know that it is a, i understand that it is a long run that it is a 
uh, that it is that it is important. We need to have a, like a well. I have a, a longer term a livelihood opportunity for me. I do have a to an extent, so I can survive on myself. So it's it's make it's make it easy for me to make a good decision. And then, then we also need some people want to do that, uh, but they don't know what to do. What they if, they if they leave the military, what will they do? They have to start from zero. How do they live? How do they support themselves? How do some of them? Well, but if you don't have a job, it's not that. It's not about getting a job. But what happened is that you're an employer. It's more than that. And that uh, the fact that uh, you know that being an employer and you know, starting life from zero is quite different as well. So the defectors uh, that uh, among the defectors, fifty percent, only fifty percent is you know trying to you know mobilize other other soldiers to 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 defend as well. Because uh, if they say that oh we everything is okay, we are doing great, we are enjoying physically, we are fine, and that uh, you know that we are doing right. No, we are not. After two after two two years of that, uh, how many are uh, you know doing the defector? If you get if you study not even 10 percent as well and why is it why is it because of that they are not they are not they are not they are having issues psychologically and physically so what do the people those who want to defend they look at what has what is happening to the other defectors is that other defectors you know that not only those who are strong and that are you know those who are not strong, they're psychologically strong, or who are not, uh, you know, whatever happened, they can face the issue, they can face the challenges, and that it is only a certain amount of a small group of people who can do that as well. But most people are not like that. They need help. They need, uh, they need uh, that, uh, you know, psycho. They need help psychologically to, to find a livelihood. They don't know what to, you know, what to do as a livelihood as well, and they don't have the, the they don't, they, they don't, they have nothing, and they have nothing, and they have lost everything for them. Is that uh, you know that uh, it's not just about many that for them to be able to face the challenges they need ability they need capacities to be able to face these challenges and that also is an issue as well and that uh, another challenge is that uh, these groups uh, that uh, that in terms of uh, what is happening uh, them is that uh, they, 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 their brains and their ideological has been uh, you know uh, they you know in a way uh, uh, the formatted just like I would say just like element uh, that that's just it's like uh, elephants. Elephants, are, you know, they feel that they always has been, they always has been uh, ele the elephants have been, uh, you know, beaten uh, since they are young, and they they have installed the fear has been installed deep inside. So they cannot think sharply. They don't. They need an implant as they need something to push them as well. It's not that they are not interested in the factor. Even if they are interested, they need uh, something to to make the jump, you know, so to speak. So that's what is missing. That's what. It you cannot see them as the normal people. They are not normal people. If you consider as a normal people, no. They oh, they are also they are also you know uh, they uh, they are also like human beings. They should they should have the ability to uh, you know do that as well. No, they do not. Uh, that it is important to that. Why should they have the courage like the you know average citizen? No, in terms of thinking or that in terms of uh, education or physically or that uh, physically or psychologically, they are at a lower level than normal people. So if we cannot deal with it, we cannot manage that you will not be bring them as well and then other others they will say those who are also there are those who are also working you know the, the very volun very willingly they are not interested in the fact of the fact at all that uh, and they will not uh, step by the people they were the one who will go to the end so they will be they because they they like the military they like what the military can give so these are that so i think it is important to understand them in different categories and that if we see them if we see them then that will be uh, better and easier to see as well Thank you, Gonyi Duda, for the, for the answer. If, we, if you have uh, other questions also, please feel free to let us know as well. So that, uh, so we also have uh, some questions in the chat and that I would like to discuss now. So I would like to uh, give the question to Kutemi Ao. Abort. A question is there asking that defection is seen um, very differently from compared with the earlier time. Should we concern about it or should we still um, stay in the liberated area? Now, I would like to ask you to um, reply on this particular question. And I also would like to ask you if any 
a system that um, that uh, the defection in Myanmar got from international community. Thank you. As Captain Nituda mentioned about the defection, he talked the three levels and we share some of the same opinions as well. According to our experience, a small percentage um, it's something that I would like to talk about. The border guard in Rakhine area, a soldier did not know about the coup data and he was transferred to Yangon and he was in Yangon only at that time he knew the the coup data and he 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 became the defector and he after that he joined the um, people defend forces and participating in the armed struggle as well and some of the defector uh, came to us together with the weapons and some of the defectors um, remained in the in the uh, area that they were posted as a soldier uh, but they took side of the people defend forces and um, and and participating in the armed struggle along with that with them and now i would like to talk about in thai myanmar border area there are some safe houses provision and in our organization we do not um, limit the time for the accommodation uh, we will provide the accommodation as long as they follow the regulation and as long as we have the um, results to run this accommodation and in terms of the um, occupational arrangement yes it is quite a quite a weak area of this deflection campaign but we try to provide the occupational um, uh, I mean, uh, a vocational training for occupation. Uh, but then again, language, it's a bit of a problem as well, which are all very practical indeed. So we try to um, teach them. At the moment, we have the program um, for them to, to, to have some vocational activities like dyeing clothes, um, so dye, dyeing the uh, piece of clothes so that um, they would they would um, they would uh, run their own income generations as well and for the women um, um, uh, individual from the defection campaign we um, we 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 teach them how to make handbag etc etc and uh, we also try to be link the market for them if they know some sort of product to be produced um, and we have um, collaboration with the with the um, with the NUG as well uh, but of course at this moment we do not ha necessarily um, have the engagements or strong um, support from the Ministry of Labor of the NUG but um, and we have some sort of assistance from the Ministry of International Affairs, uh, Dr. Sasa. And at this moment, no international donor for for us for the defection support. And but um, we have our friends, and we have our colleagues living in abroad, living in foreign countries, and they contributed. Um, the, the 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 money and with this money we ran safe house as well and at the earlier days of the defection we even provide accommodation for the whole family of the defector and we try to provide the decent privacy for them as well and lately 
we have um, not enough um, uh, accommodation in, in our organization for the defectors and even if we could not give them the whole room we try to pro uh, provide the dormitory so that they could share a bed and a room with the other defectors but then um, it is not funded or it is not um, from the money from the international donor. No, we don't have the uh, money from the international donor. We just can run these activities due to the donations of the friends of us. Thank you. And um, many of the questions um, raised are already answered by the input of the panelist and if there is no more questions and contribution conversation then um, we will proceed with the conclusion for today we talked about the defection we talked about the future consideration for the policymaker, for the public, for the defectors themselves. So this conversation is not ending here. And I would just like to draw our conclusion around that. First of all, I would like to ask Go Nyi Tuta what would be your conclusion remark in order for us okay uh but i'm not sure about it not you're ready my bar up on and that guy yeah yeah so that's he kind of yeah you know the next guy nine large is here also the also go to know uh to robot ball alone i look alone i was losing it the petrol low low we need it hello a time to check i know sure to know what the same in my law about it ah oh my hobby why are local law that taro and how can drop let's see my you know the new how bmb or check up in it could not be zero the your these are your daughter money bar that yeah oh let's just see me that louie ah um are through my low any yet you can yeah you want to know uh the deep in your own account the and you see uh the kids are what no no change is when through cool and lose yama low ball low way to read my video emma hello but do we are hello ที่ตัวเราเป็นเอ็นเอ็มพี่นี่เราเราเราเป็นนี่เราเราเขาเขาเขาบอกว่ามาเยอะดีเลยอย่างเป็นเลสิเอชเชนนี่เนี่ยโ
do not have a right, do not have a chance to directly engage with the defector for the confidential or for the privacy issue. So there are organizations in between the defector and the public, then such organization play a very effective and efficient role in linking up between the defectors and the public. So in three months' time or in six months' time, we should walk very differently compared with what we did in the past as well, so that the defector would be useful. Because the thing is that everyone is valuable, every defector is valuable as long as your skills, your capacity, your mental situation, your physical situations would be at the useful place. Uh, but majority of the defectors could not meet the basic need. So the only few of the defectors these days can live above their basic needs. So now I'm talking about the armed personnel and potential armed personnel are to be targeted in our strategy for the future de defection. So this is a continuous job that each and every one of us um, um, should look at. And now talking about the current defectors, in the current defectors, some of them want to do some job, uh, but they may not be ready in terms of their mental status. So it is important to address their mental support need so that they will be fully fit for the job in the future, for the occupation in the future. Thank you very much. And now I would like to ask Go Min U for the conclusion remark. What we should consider with the current defectors, all the stakeholders, what they should participate, collaborate, engage with. Thank you very much. I would like to mention that the there are many, many supporters of the military still serving the military. And Captain Nyiduta mentioned already about it. We are not in a position to pressure them not to work for the military. We can just only persuade them not to work for the military. There are all the practical reasons and explanation for that, but we should not leave anyone behind in terms of the defection. I mean, we should put aside whether they will be regarded as a CDMRs or whether they are not re regarded as CDMRs. So leave this perspective aside, but it is important for them to join the defection campaign. And, and we can definitely make use of all the defection and there are many defectors who actively walk when they are outside of militaries as well. And some of the defectors, of course, can persuade the, the, the their former colleagues, uh, but there are all the practical reasons that the current defectors cannot persuade their former colleagues who are still serving the military. And there are all the um, realities as well for them for not effectively and efficiently um, doing the mobilizing job. But for us, the first thing is to make sure that the current defectors are are uh, meeting their basic needs. Uh, that is not 
much really, I mean, to be done to meet their basic needs. So it's just a matter of having these basic needs addressed properly within our capacity. And only then we will have uh, more defectors um, if the current defectors are all meeting their basic needs. And in that case, we don't end up killing our own brothers and sisters and our own um, blood and, and people. So, of course, as Captain Nyi Tuta mentioned, um, there are many, many um, uh, armed personnel who are inclined to be defectors, but they can decide or they cannot practically quit or leave the military with all their practical reasons as well. When I talk about the practical needs, it is basic needs. So once the basic needs are addressed for them and for their families, then I'm sure that we will have more and more and more defectors. Currently, we still are receiving the defectors as well, and we are having defectors, I mean, every day as well. And we also know that we still have many revolution um, supporters serving as a spy for us while they are uh, in the militaries as well. So there are many things to do indeed. There are many basic needs to be addressed as well. And once um, they are done, and I we will have more defectors. I am hopeful with that. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your contribution. I have key two takeaways, I would say, for me. I would like to share about them as the concluding remark. One point, it's about a defection policy. We need to have a policy for that. We, it is not enough that we support the defector or defection idea. We really need to have the policy for that. And in this policy, the, the target group are to be identified. The actual willingness is to be questioned as well. And the practical actions to be implemented accordingly as well. Of course, we have two years of experience in the past. And otherwise, we will miss the opportunity for the defection. So the policymakers, the stakeholders in the revolution should have strong commitment, preparation, and action on the defection. So this is to be considered as well. Second takeaway for me is about the support and assistant. The defectors are to take a role to participate in the revolution. The defectors are to participate in mobilizing the 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 armed personnel their former colleagues for that in order to be in these roles the basic needs of the defectors are to be assisted and supported so we really have to work together around that and some of the questions from the checkbox are not being addressed um, due to the time limitation and some of the question has been answered and has been discussed in the past as well so that's why some of them are not addressed as well and if you would like to participate or engage or contribute and support and assist the defection and please um, contact the people people's goal program we have component and we have features, um, we have activities um, for the defections as well. We will be there for you. And now I just would like to conclude this conversation saying that we must work together to have stronger defections.